Okay, well this is Apostle John Welty with Second Eighth Week Ministries, and today is May 15th, 2011. And we are going to be continuing on here in 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, picking up at verse 6. I'm going to do just a little bit of recap here. Okay, so uh, let me just read beginning with verse 1 through, uh, through 7 here just to get us all you know, back into this. So 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. Um, reading, Wherefore, laying aside all malice, and all guile, and hypocrisies, and envies, and, e and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. If so be, you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. To whom coming, as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, you also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believes on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Uh, but you also, uh, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, uh, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. All right, that goes through verse 10. So let's let's go in and look at uh, look at verses uh, seven there uh, a little bit more. Now, the earlier verses we covered in the previous uh, in the previous assembly, and which is available uh, on a previous recording there uh, on a video. So, beginning here in verse 7, though, he says, To you, therefore, which believe. Okay, now when he says, therefore, okay, uh, it's because of the clarity, the soundness, and growth that you are experiencing by him that you value these things, uh, which brought life and light, uh, light and life to your soul, okay, which was before only experiencing darkness and death, even while practicing the traditions of your fathers. Okay, this is the condition that we all came into coming uh, into covenant with God. Right, that uh, that we had this this experience, uh, and I was I was explaining this uh, the other day to my uh, to my dad. Um, you know, we were uh, ever since Adam, okay, uh, with the fall, we've been born into darkness, okay. So we are born into the kingdom of death. So we begin uh, basically as you know stillborns, right, when we were born into death. So. Uh, our entire life experience was an experience of being tethered to the soil. Our our entire life experience prior to coming into covenant with God, okay, was uh, being tethered to the soil. It was, uh, you know, the kingdom of death, okay. All of the influences, all of the tools that we used, all of the knowledge that we worked with were all uh, touched by death, okay. Corruption had entered into all of these things. Therefore, the soul was taking on the substance of that which we were embracing, all right, which the soul does. The soul takes on the substance of what you embrace. All right, so you're either embracing the kingdom of darkness or you're embracing the kingdom of light. Now, if you've not yet been converted, okay, if you've not yet uh, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, okay, with the uh, with with the witness of tongues, okay, which is in confirmation of this, uh, if you have not yet uh, gone through your doctrinal cleansing, okay, and had this altar of Christ, this foundation. Uh, this foundation knowledge of Christ set within your soul, all right? In order to, uh, which is the, uh, it's the anointing which prepares us for the priesthood. Okay, then you're going to be a stranger to this priesthood. You're going to be a stranger to these things that Apostle Peter's talking about. Okay, because he's speaking to those who have been converted. He's keep, he's speaking to those who are keeping covenant with God. All right, they are familiar with the with the covenant of Jesus Christ. All right, they're con they are uh, familiar with the the terms and the conditions that God set. For, for our redemption, okay? That it's by these things, right, that we experience the redemption of Christ. And without Christ, we experience 
uh, death, darkness and death. Okay? Within Christ, we experience light and life. Without Christ, we experience darkness and death. Okay, this, this is the gospel. Um, now, there's many people who have, you know, taken that into many different directions. Okay, they try to turn all these things into allegories and metaphors, and they try to reduce uh, Christianity down to, uh, you know, daily life choices. All right, but God is not judging us, okay, concerning those things. God judges according to faith. He judges us according to our choices of faith. Which tools do we use? Which knowledge do we yoke ourselves to? What things are we embracing, okay, for faith? So are you embracing Christ? Okay. Are you working only with the holy order knowledge which God issues through Christ, which he does through his apostles? Okay. Or have you built for yourself a house of knowledge okay, from your own private interpretations or that you've gleaned from various uh, teachings from tens of thousands of teachers okay, that you've built upon, uh, you, you've built for yourself you know, your own house of knowledge? Okay. Well, if you're doing that, God will not breathe life into that. God will not sanctify your own house. Okay, He will only sanctify Christ. Okay, Christ has provided the framework and the foundation, right, for our building. Okay, and it is the covenant of, and it, it, it it's the new covenant. Okay, which requires, uh, which requires instruction in in the knowledge of the priesthood. Right, just as the first covenant priest could not function without first being prepared, okay, separated, cleansed, and instructed. Okay, as concerning the priesthood, they couldn't go in and learn their job by trial and error. All right, uh, if they used strange fire, right, they were put to death. Okay, if they used any unclean thing, okay, they were put to death. It, so you had to go into this with a little bit of instruction, didn't you? Okay, because there was rules. There's and God sets rules to the covenant. Okay, so also our contact with Him is governed by the law of grace and truth. Okay, there God set a law for faith, and it's the law of the Spirit. Okay, and so it's important to understand what that is. Well, uh, when when Apostle Peter here is talking to you, therefore, which believe, he's talking about those uh, who are acknowledging, molding with, and submitting to the grace of God. Okay, they are taking on, they're, they're willingly taking on the yoke of his knowledge, laboring uh, with the Spirit, using the tools of the Spirit, okay, and they are serving God uh, through the priesthood of Jesus Christ. This is what he's talking about. Okay, so this... Uh, those that he's uh, writing to here, okay, um, are those that are keeping covenant with God. So if you're not yet in covenant with God, okay, then you need to you need to find out about what that what that means, okay. And if you are, then you understand what he's talking about here, don't you? All right. So let's go on with that. All right. So God sets clear distinction between our past experience and our new experience so that we may behold Christ in our new experience with his grace and peace and understand clearly the connection between this new experience uh, and his law of grace and truth. Okay, it's important for us to reflect upon these connections as we are meditating upon the covenant, as we are praying in tongues, as we are offering up our spiritual sacrifices, and as we're sharing with the brethren. Okay, God set value in these things by setting Christ in them. Okay, it is Christ that gives value to the tools. Uh, and uh, they are therefore profitable for our reflection and essential for our faith to remain living. Okay, because as we are joining ourselves to these things, the Spirit is breathing life into the soul. Okay, the Spirit is breathing life into our faith. All right. So, uh, apart from the sanctified tools of the covenant, all right, people find that they have to find some other inspiration, okay, in order to um, feel like there's something there. Okay, because the the soul is the, the soul is demanding reality, uh, and we touched upon this in a in a recent assembly. Okay, it'd be like, uh, you know, there's there's an apple tree and there's a shadow of an apple tree. Okay, the soul, you know, with the mind, you can you can imagine that maybe I could go over there and, and grab the shadow of an apple and sustain myself. Okay, but the soul is going to demand uh, completion through contact. It wants substance. Okay, uh, and so. Uh, so also with faith, all right, that you can decide for yourself uh, that, that the knowledge you're embracing must surely be honored by God and that the tools that you're using must surely be good in his sight, okay? But if you're not embracing Christ, then the Father will not bear witness to Christ in those things, all right? So you're going to have to find some other inspiration to make your faith living, aren't you? Okay, well, there is no other inspiration, okay? The 
the uh, what you'll find is is uh, seducing spirits, which will which will provide um, an unsanctified inspiration. Okay, which is not actually making your faith living. Okay, it's just um, uh, kind of playing with the imagination. Okay, it'd be like uh, <clears throat> it'd be like teasing somebody, saying, you know, hey, I got what you want over here. It's it's just right around here. Follow me, right? Um, or you know, uh, you know, luring somebody, uh, you know, with some candy or with some money or something like that. You know, hey, come follow me, type of thing. But uh, they're not actually offering it to them in order to reward them with anything they're actually they also actually have evil intent okay the goal is to you know disarm them so that they can take advantage of them well that's what satan does okay and that's what seducing spirits do all right so they will tell you and, and they will put forth a, a show of godliness but they have no power to bring forth the fruit of christ all right and so what happens is 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 there's a show of godliness but they deny the power thereof Right, because in other words, the spirit will not make that living. The spirit will not enter into that. The law of the spirit is not governing that for fruit bearing. Okay, well, what'll happen? It'll increase death and corruption at the, in, within the soul. Okay, well, we had enough death and corruption within the soul prior to coming to the covenant. We don't want that again. Right, so we don't want to follow after those inspirations. So what you want to do is work with that which God bears witness to. Okay, and then you don't need to you don't need to find a witness because God bears witness. Okay. You know, you'll hear people, uh, uh, I've heard that in with, with some preachers, you know, calling out that they want to get a witness. Well, you know, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for something to kind of help, uh, you know, keep them in their, keep them motivated and uh, in their, keep their passions inflamed. They're looking for people to fan the fire. Well, they're looking for people to fan the fire because God is not breathing life within their soul. Okay. The temple is absent of the spirit. Okay. And so they're looking for some other inspiration. Well, if you're looking for another inspiration then you need to start looking at the foundation and the framework right? because when when you when your faith is is sanctified by god you will not need to look for inspiration all right because the spirit of god will continue to bear witness to christ okay the grace of god inspires faith in christ right without fail so you, you don't have to look for that because you'll know where you'll know where the grace of god is the grace of god is in the contact points of the covenant There'll be absolutely no question whatsoever Okay, and not only is there no question uh, in your mind, there's no question to the soul because the soul. What happens is the soul becomes accustomed uh, to drawing upon the grace of God. And the soul becomes accustomed to being rewarded with an increase of grace. Okay, so it'd be like if every time you went to, uh, uh, you know, the dinner table, right, and uh, and you partake of a nice healthy meal. Okay, then every time you know you get into that habit, you know you're you're confident that, that, you know, yeah, when I go to my kitchen, go to my dinner table, I'm going to get a good meal, right? Well, if uh, in the false religious system, you remember that it was, uh, you know, there's many times where you went to the dinner table and you ended up finding that all the food was styrofoam. You know, it was plastic and it was fake. Uh, and so there was, there was a, a lack of confidence there, okay? Uh, and sometimes you ate something that, uh, well, that kind of seemed like food, like, like going to a fast food restaurant, right? Sometimes you get something that, you know, it looks like food and it smells like food, but, you know, doesn't really, uh, doesn't really sit well with the body, right? Because, uh, because the contents were, uh, were, were kind of questionable sometimes. Well, that's how it is with false knowledge. Okay. But in covenant with truth, okay, the soul becomes very confident, okay, through consistent contact with the grace of God. Okay. And it, uh, and the grace of God actually takes root within the soul and establishes uh, that firm footing and foundation okay to where we walk uh, we walk very confidently along the path of righteousness with the tools of the spirit okay where the soul is not taking uh, it's not like walking on eggshells because this the soul we can step confidently okay along this course because every step that we've taken okay we found ourselves on, fo on fir firm footing right and our foot is not slipped 